watching Edinburgh and Beyond, please welcome your host, the Duke of Draft, the pub landlord, Mr. Al Murray! Where only the best stand up comedy makes it to your screen. Yes, that screen, the screen in front of you right now. But in front of me right now is this beautiful audience. Look at these beautiful British people, hey? The big fella here, what's your name, pal? Mike. Hey? Mike. Mike! Beautiful British name. What do you do for a living, squad? Child carer. Child carer? <laughs> <laughs> Have you been vetted? <laughs> hey! <laughs> you disgust me. <laughs> hey! <laughs> How do you keep these kids in order? Sit on them? <laughs> It's a big fella, welcome. Yeah, and he's yeah, and he's Mohican friend. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> haven't seen one of those in a while. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> what's your name, pal? Adam. Adam, beautiful British name. What do you do, Sam? I drive a forklift. You drive a forklift? It's a beautiful shape. <laughs> hey. Hey. Yeah. Why be ambitious, eh? Fantastic. <laughs> Industrial ballet, in him. <laughs> 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 God bless you. That's a proper job. <laughs> yeah, does that ever get caught in the mechanism? <laughs> <laughs> We have here the gentleman, the relaxed looking fella. What's your name, pal? Dan. Daniel! Beautiful British name. What'd you do, Danny? Um, unemployed. You're unemployed? <laughs> <laughs> what job couldn't you hold down, Danny? What, what's. <laughs> I, I, I've just graduated. You've just graduated? <laughs> <laughs> what? What, what, what are you graduated in? Sports leadership. Sports leadership? <laughs> Say I can't read and write. <laughs> it's thick, this one. This one's thick. Yeah. Is that your girlfriend or someone you're telling how to do press-ups? <laughs> what's, what's your name, darling? Heather. Anna. Heather. Heather. Beautiful British name. What do you do, sweetheart? At the moment, I'm working in a pub. At the moment, you're working in a pub. It's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> what's your name, your gaff? The owl. The owl. <laughs> That's a proper pub name, isn't it? Because proper pubs have proper pub names, don't they? Yeah, yeah. Because they have proper pub names reflect either the natural order of things, yeah, don't they? Animals, yeah, or proper jobs, don't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The natural order of things. You have the Duke of Devonshire, the King's Head, the Queen's Head. Yeah, the natural order of things. Posh things. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, or animal names, the owl, yeah? The coach and horses, which has got horses in it. The dog and duck, fox and hounds, the, the swan, animal names. All proper bloody jobs, yeah? Like the, the cricketers, the riflemen's, the carpenters' arms, the stonemasons' arms. They'll never be a child carer's arms, will they? <laughs> <laughs> mm. It'll never happen. <laughs> I'll go get the microphone, because we've got to welcome our first act. So build up your applause, ladies and gentlemen. And you are home. And you are home. As we welcome... Welsh comedian and Welshman from Wales, Mark Watson. Ta. Ta. Thank you. Um, well, yes, I'm from Wales. Um, can you all understand the Welsh accent? It's probably the most maligned accent. People are always taking the piss out of it. A friend of mine said, um, oh, I can never do a Welsh accent. If I try and do Welsh, it comes out sounding Pakistani. <laughs> you know? I was like, well, you know, you just have to try harder to master it. Ahmed. Yeah, uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> ah, he's an accent, that boy. <laughs> uh, the good thing, the nice thing about a Welsh accent is, of course, once you've got a peculiar accent, your tolerance of other accents is increased. Like, nearly any accent I can decipher. South African is the only one I struggle with. I live with the South African ones. Very difficult. The vowels were all the same, you know. A word like uh, cigarettes, you know, se sound like secrets. Secrets. You know, you'd be smoking, so you go, give me one of your secrets. Can I have one of your secrets? Uh, well, I once had a wank in the British Library. Um, <laughs> 
Oh, it's a fag, oh dear. Uh, life's full of these petty little embarrassments, isn't it? I a stupid, oh God, I tell you what I hate, being hassled. I've been hassled an awful lot recently. London's full of hassle, well everywhere is really. I was in the street, just minding my own business the other day, and someone came up to me in the street and said, excuse me, excuse me, did you know, in the time you've been standing there, three animals have died in captivity. I was like, right, okay, I won't stand here. <laughs> I, but it's probably a coincidence, to be honest. You know? <laughs> I find it very difficult when somebody quotes a fact like that in the street and you're somehow meant to rectify the situation. Someone came up to me once and said um, it was an equal rights rally. They said, excuse me, did you know women still earn, on average, 25% less than men? I was like, lazy buggers. <laughs> I know, you see. But it turns out it's an injustice, you see. Ah, uh, so we can... Well... And there's an obvious tension now among some members. You may be thinking, well, what a misogynist. No, only a joke, really. Ah, look, at this. look, I'm married. I'm married, I am. Look at that. There's a wedding ring there. I'm showing you my wedding ring as if that proves anything. Of course, you can't buy these. You know. <laughs> Oh, please. Oh, yeah, when's the big day? Oh, there'll be no big day. <laughs> this is my personal use. It's, um, it's the same as, like, if you see someone, uh, see someone with a football shirt with Beckham on, often not Beckham. <laughs> but I am married. Ah, it's lovely. Being married is lovely. So sometimes, of course, there's, an argument. there's bound to be rows. We had a stupid argument over a toothbrush, right? She, uh, I, I lost my toothbrush. Uh, it's a long story, but that's it. And uh, that, <laughs> that is the essence of the tale. And um, I needed to borrow her toothbrush. Now, women, uh, if you were living with a man and you trusted him, uh, would you let him borrow your toothbrush? Yeah, yeah, she quite mostly knows that my wife was... Uh, she's appalled. Uh, that's disgusting. That's been in my mouth. And, you know... <laughs> I like saying I can't stop using everything on that basis. <laughs> yeah, there's a cock joke suddenly out of nowhere. <laughs> it's a filth. You never know, do you? <laughs> uh, I know. It's, I don't, I don't want to make it look like I'm one of these people who are very casual about sex. I don't like people who are, you know, treat sex as if it's irrelevant. I, um, I was watching that program about animals. Uh, Trisha, is it? And there was this... Um, <laughs> uh, God, genuinely. This guy was on. Um, he was a cockney. I can't really do a cockney. Hang on, we, we, we give it a go. Uh, oh, right. <laughs> uh, 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 oh, yeah. He was about, she was there. He was talking as if this woman did not exist. Was, yeah, I met this girl and uh, took her back to my place and we was just fooling about and now she's pregnant. I, I know, can you spot the flaw in the logic? <laughs> in that case, that's not fooling about. That's impregnating a woman, right? <laughs> Fooling about is like you finish a drink, get the pint glass, go, oh, look, I'm an aardvark, there's my snout. <laughs> I mean, right? It's not a snout, it's a glass. That is fooling about, right? <laughs> fooling about is like you tap someone on the shoulder, they turn around, where are you? Other shoulder, hello. <laughs> right? That is fooling. The difference is you haven't conceived a child at the end of it. <laughs> right? uh, unless the tap on the shoulder trick goes very badly wrong. <laughs> You know, this devil may care attitude to sex, it does seem to work. Some people, the more boastful they are, the more sexually aggressive, the more sex they get is annoying. Boastful people generally get a very easy time, I think. A lot of even great men, Muhammad Ali, right? Great man, great boxer, but he was boastful. He was always going, oh yeah, I'm the greatest. You know, Muhammad Ali, um, to try and psych out the other boxer in a, like a press conference, he used to go, oh, I'm so quick, I can put the light off in my bedroom. I'm in bed before it gets dark. <laughs> uh, no, uh, that is not that impressive, just get a bedside light. You know what I mean? Uh, uh, it's not a magical power, a trip to Ikea will suffice, you know? Uh, <laughs> these days you do hear a lot of very boastful people talking themselves, uh, especially I find on the train. You meet, I mean, you meet a lot of real tossers on the train, you know? Well, <laughs> you know it's not a case of meeting them, really. You know? Oh, you must be the tosser for this journey, hello. No. Uh, <laughs> How'd you get started in this? Well, I started as a twat on the bus and worked my way up, you know. <laughs> uh, you know. It's like anything, you work at it, you'll get there. I, um, and of course, train travel, as it is, is a very frustrating experience. So bloody expensive. Oh, God, they're so smug as well. Like, That's £81.19, please. How are you paying for that? You're like, well, I've sold a couple of things. I've made sacrifices in other areas of my life. Or, the, or like, how would you like to pay? I fucking hate that. How would you like to pay? Well, I'd like to pay by smashing you in the face, you know? <laughs> Do you, do you accept smash? Anyway, um, <laughs> very, very rarely that they do. Uh, yeah, very often.
often, though, you see, you, right, you've paid your money, it's lots of money. Of course, again, frequently, you have to endure a terrible service with all these excuses and bloody delays. I heard a new excuse as um, I was on a train to uh, Colchester in Essex, and they said, uh, yeah, sorry about the delay, ladies and gentlemen, we're just delayed uh, because of an incident involving a passenger under a train. I thought, that's nice, isn't it? <laughs> like, at what point do you stop being a passenger and become a corpse, do you think? <laughs> be alive while I was, you know, uh, not like, doesn't sound like someone's died at all, just an incident involving a passenger under the train. Sounds like someone was just crouched under the train for a prank, you know, <laughs> and then when the driver to the go, boo, oh, 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 I can't drive now, you've maybe jumped too much. <laughs> With your funny incidents. <laughs> oh, God, I hate it. This, this bloody announcement. I'm just at the thought of train travel. I'm jigging around in the impatience. I, 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 I got a train to Aberdeen, London King's Cross to Aberdeen. An enormous, arduous journey. It's like eight hours. And I was on the platform, and there's this bloody announcement, you know, platform four, passengers waiting the 10 o'clock train from London King's Cross to Aberdeen, calling at, and then off they go, you know, Potters Bar, Stevenage, Hitchin, Grantham, Newark Northgate, Peterborough, Doncaster, Wakefield Westgate, Leeds, York, Darlington, Durham, Inverkeithing, Berwick upon Tweed. Montreux, Stonehaven, and Aberdeen. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's cancelled. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes train travel is probably the lowest. Ever. Yeah, I met this woman, uh, an American woman. I've got nothing as Americans, but this woman was really talking herself up. She was uh, some man that dumped her, and she was going. First of all, she kept saying, um, "I always say what's on my mind." She's on the mobile. Listen, I always speak my mind. You know me. I always, and I was thinking, "All right, you always speak. Your, what do you want? A fucking medal?" You know, uh, many people always say what's on their mind. Hitler, the Cookie Monster. <laughs> uh, <laughs> There's no merit in always saying what's on your mind if all that's on your mind is kill Jews or cookie, 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 right? <laughs> um, uh, I didn't say, I kept my silence, sure. <laughs> I didn't want to create an argument, especially not with the cookie monster involved. And then um, she went on to say, why do you not want to go out with me? I'm the bomb, I'm the bomb, she was saying. And I thought, what the hell is this woman talking about? <laughs> and uh, but the more, uh, like a younger friend explained to me, oh, the bomb is what they say these days, you know, it means brilliant, amazing. And I, have you heard this? It's, I, I just think, of all people, should Americans be walking around going, the bomb, the bomb? <laughs> As if it's, endorsed. it's like a German saying, it's a gas. Do you know what I mean? It's, uh... <laughs> yeah, yeah. There we are. Now that's really divided the audience. <laughs> I've got to go in a minute. I've, I've got loads of things to moan about. I didn't even get onto it. Uh, quickly, though. Oh, right. I bought a phone. Bloody hell. Don't ever buy a mobile phone. This guy was... I've been talking about aggressive. This was the most aggressive man I've met in my life. He was determined to make me buy the most expensive bloody phone in the world. You know? Oh, buy this. The Samsung Golden Cock 4000. You know? <laughs> You buy this phone, you can watch MTV clips, he said. Are you interested in watching TV on your phone? I was like, well, no, I've got a TV. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm not interested in watching TV on my phone for the same reason I'm not interested in having a shit in my tumble dryer. <laughs> you know what I mean? I've got specific equipment for these jobs. I'll leave you with that. Thank you, guys, Mark Watson.